So, welcome to lecture number 15, where we are uh, discussing about the terminal voltage current relationship of an inductor and uh, as I told you that a capacitor you always show uh, a direction of current is your prerogative, you choose that. Once you choose that, then show the voltage across the plate of the capacitor to be like this. I am writing V t here because no other elements present. Generally in a circuit, uh, if other elements are present, I will write V c t to indicate capacitor voltage. Anyway, so this is the voltage across the plate of the capacitor. We will not be writing it down in terms of Q and this is the capacitance. If that be the case, then what happens is this I t uh, is equal to C d V d t that that will be always true. And second thing is a general expression of the voltage across the capacitor is equal to 1 over C and uh, minus infinity to T i d t. So, uh, this, uh, this thing that integration of 1 over C minus infinity to 0 minus i d t, how you behaved with the capacitor with uh, currents uh, from minus infinity to 0 minus uh, that is important and then 0 minus to 0 plus for a reasonable current source uh, that will be 0, then I will uh, that is 0 minus to 0 plus whatever is there that vanishes in fact for a reasonable current waveform and then from uh, 0 plus to T i d t. This is a very famous and important equation every bit of it you try to understand. And then this being 0, uh, this whole thing this previous history will be uh, encrypted uh, in uh, this uh, number v 0 minus and uh, that is all and then plus 0 plus to t present current that you are giving and this 0 plus now can be treated as 0 for all practical purposes. So, this is the voltage across the plate of the capacitor at any time t initial voltage plus new current that you are injecting into the plates of the capacitor that will decide the voltage across the plate. And obviously, V 0 plus from this equation also as you can see V 0 plus will be V 0 minus plus uh, 0 plus 0 plus i d t. Uh, this eventually has to be 0 limits being same. So, this is equal to 0 v 0 minus in absence of any impulse current source. So, these two things are important and then I discussed about the energy storing capability. If at any instant of time the voltage across the plate of the capacitor is v then the energy stored is this much joules. If C is in farad and V is in volts, this you must remember. So, this is the thing. <coughs> now, we will go a bit faster. Similar treatment we will do to a capacitor as we have done in case of inductive circuit. First thing, charging a capacitor charging a capacitor. Okay. To charge a capacitor means what? That uh, I why should I charge a capacitor? To store energy that should be understood. So, one of the circuit is like this. This is suppose a battery E volts plus minus ideal battery. Then you have a switch here with 
R and C, RC charging, they call it. And uh, the capacitor is uh, initially it was uncharged. Let us assume I never applied some current into the capacitor, never passed any current through, through the capacitor. So, V 0 minus was 0, which eventually means that this is equal to V 0 plus and this is for all practical purposes, this is V 0. Now, I will close this switch <coughs> S at t equal to 0, that is the thing. If I do that, then I expect uh, there will be some EMF I have applied and there will be some current flowing into the circuit at any time t, suppose this is I t. And if current flows, uh, voltage will build up across the plate of the capacitor and this voltage, let me write it as V t, capacitor voltage then uh, I write down the KVL. Once you do that, uh, this, vo this voltage drop is R into I. I is coming like this, so R I and uh, I we know it is nothing but C d V d t. So, this voltage drop across the plate of the capacitor will be R C d V d t. <coughs> Now, uh, the KVL equation, I start from this point, go here, there is a voltage rise E minus 2 plus, from this to this there is a voltage drop minus R C d V d t R i and from this to this there is a voltage drop plus 2 minus, I come to this point, then back to this there is no drop here and this must be 0, that is the KVL. See, KVL equation, KCL equations are so nice, it will always be valid no matter whether you are dealing with constant voltage, constant current, resistive circuit, RLC circuit, time varying current voltage situations, at every instant it will satisfy. Uh, so, that is the key. So, uh, so this, this once again I will take it uh, to the right hand side and uh, write it like this is equal to E <coughs> or, or uh, d v d t if you do divide by R c v, I will do it a bit faster, you also are exposed to this at some point or other in your first year course. So, this is the uh, fundamental differential equation. Once again, it is a linear differential equation first order. So, integrating factor you multiply you with that is 1 over R c into t d v d t plus 1 over R c e to the power 1 over R c into t v is equal to e by R c. This will be the thing and this is nothing but it is a product of two functions differentiation of that 1 by T by R c into V is equal to E by R c. Uh, is it correct? No, I have multiplied both sides with 1 over R c into T. So, it will be E to the power 1 over R c into T e to the power 1 by R c t is the integrating factor. So, you multiply with this. Then uh, this uh, d t, this d t, you bring it to the right hand side and write it like this. Then integrate both sides, so that uh, the integration will become, uh, integration will become on the left hand side e to the power t by R c into V is equal to this integration will be e to the power R c was there, this is constant by 1 over R c e to the power m x, e to the power m x by m. So, 1 over R c 
uh, into e to the power uh, t by r c and plus a constant of integration. This is how this will be, but my goal is to find out v t. So, I multiply both sides by e to the power minus t by r c to make it v on the left hand side and this will become e this two cancels out and um, it will then become e to the power t by r c e to the power minus t by r c 1 plus a over a into e to the power minus t by r c. So, this is the solution voltage across the plate of the capacitor at any time t. Now, <coughs> you uh, uh, should not be under the impression that to charge a capacitor I have to connect a current source. This uh, somehow you have to feed some current and we find uh, okay, it flows whether it is coming from a battery or a current source it uh, does not change the very concepts. Current fed into a capacitor will build up voltage like that. So, this is the thing. <coughs> now, how to determine this constant? To find out the constant, I will apply this thing that V 0 is equal to 0. So, V at t equal to 0 is equal to 0 will give you 0 is equal to E plus A t equal to 0, this will become 1. So, A is equal to minus E. Therefore, voltage across the plate of the capacitor will simply become E minus e into e to the power minus t by r c or uh, people write it like this that 1 minus e to the power minus t by r c. Now, uh, if you sketch this waveform it will be like this voltage across the plate of the capacitor V t. So, before that voltage across the plate of the capacitor was 0, V 0 minus and suppose you never applied any current to the capacitors therefore, it was 0. Suddenly here you have switched on this uh, battery, so some current started flowing charging the capacitor and voltage across the plate of the capacitor will build up like this and at t equal to infinity v at t equal to infinity will become e because this fellow will vanish e to the power minus infinity times to 0. Although it will of course, asymptotically meet this final voltage, final voltage across the plate of the capacitor will be like this here e. Once again, uh, uh, the capacitor will be charged to the supply voltage E no doubt and if you wish you can find out how current changes with time. So, to find out current what you have to do is this I t will be equal to C d V d t. So, differentiate this voltage now and you will see that it is equal to E and you are differentiating. So, um, so, so C d V d t, so C was there, now I am differentiating. So, E and uh, there is a minus here, this minus will come out minus 1 by R C, it will make it plus and it will be 1 over C here. And, uh, e to the power minus t by r c this will be and this uh, goes c c and it becomes equal to e to the power r e over r e to the power minus t by r c. This will be the expression of the current that is how it will change. So, if below this if you sketch the current waveform it will be like this current was 0 earlier nothing was there. So, current at t equal to 0 E by R. 
So, there is a sudden jump in current. What is the magnitude of the current? E by r. And after that, as time passes, this exponentially decays down to 0 with the same time constant as voltage builds up. Now, I have not defined time constant yet, but I can say that voltage across the plate of the capacitor is like this, then I will say that it is equal to E 1 minus E to the power minus T by tau, where tau is equal to 1 over R C is called the time constant. of the R C circuit. At T equal to tau, the, the voltage to which the capacitor will charge will be that same thing 0 0.632 into E at this point. Maybe after 2, 3, 4 time constant it will uh, become fully charged. You need not wait for T equal to infinity for making the capacitor fully charged. Okay? So, this is the thing. So, finally, the voltage across the capacitor plate will be capital E. Now, two points uh, are to be noted here, very interesting point. One is that, that uh, at t equal to 0, current can jump, current have a jump, you see sharp jump, which is not allowed, which is not uh, allowed means it should not happen in an inductor, current should not jump uh, in no time. In that case, uh, d i l d t will be infinity, very large voltage will appear, all these things happens in inductor. That is why current jump should be avoided in an inductor, sharp jump in current, vertical, but in a capacitor no problem, current can jump, but voltage cannot. If voltage jumps abruptly from 0 to some finite value, that means uh, current required will be infinitely large, sort of impulse current, we will address those problems later. But here capacitor in general it will be like this. Now, you see that at t equal to 0, current at i 0 is equal to E by r. I mean that is i 0 plus is same as i 0, it will be E by r. As if capacitor is not there, there is a short circuit current in the circuit is, is the circuit at t equal to 0 as if behaving like a resistive circuit E by R. So, some people say capacitor behaves like a short circuit, although it, it should not be told like that for this particular case it happens like this capacitor behaves like a short circuit. With uncharged capacitor it will always do like that if there was no voltage across the plate of the capacitor at t equal to 0 minus, then you do some switching, the voltage across the plate of the capacitor still will remain 0, therefore, it can be treated as a short circuit. But if the capacitor had some initial voltage, then that voltage will be preserved, then it should not be treated as a short circuit. Are you getting? So, anyway, so E by R. But later it is not, capacitor will have some voltage drop and these two voltage drops will give you V. So, that is what it is telling, that is one point. So, some people say an uncharged capacitor initially in a circuit, if you do some switching at t equal to 0, if you are interested to know the currents etcetera, then you do not have to solve differential equation put a short circuit across the plate of the capacitor, solve it. This equation tells that very in interesting thing. Achha, second thing is uh, and finally, you know the current in the circuit is 0, at t equal to infinity current will be 
the, this axis I forgot to mention always uh, uh, this is time axis. Whenever you sketch something mark the axis very clearly. So, this is time axis at t equal to infinity current in, in the circuit is 0. Current in the circuit is 0 means there is some open circuit somewhere because there is a voltage there is a resistance. So, capacitor plate will become behave like a open circuit. Okay? So, so, capacitor behaves like a open circuit when steady state is reached with a DC voltage here and it behaves like a short circuit at t equal to 0 that is one thing. Second interesting thing is that if you keep this switch on for several time seconds you may be rest assured that the voltage across the plate of the capacitor will be E and there will be no current flowing in the circuit. So, capacitor will be fully charged to the supply voltage. Hence, it will store energy. What is the final energy stored? It will be half C E square, is not? Now, one interesting uh, thing I would like to point out here. So, capacitor finally stores energy which is equal to half C square. And during this charging procedure, the, the, this axis is I t, this is I t. So, if you write down this equation, better let me write. So, that uh, this voltage, this curve is V is equal to use MATLAB and get this curve 1 minus E to the power minus T by tau and this is I t. How current varies with time? It is E by R into e to the power minus t by tau. Tau is the time constant which is oh I made a mistake here uh, be careful t is tau is R c product of R c please correct that product of R c is the time constant not 1 by R c and uh, in case of inductive circuit time constant was L by R you recall that. Anyway, so, this is the thing. So, tau, tau is the time constant. Now, <coughs> while charging the capacitor, one interesting observation I would like to share with you when I am going through this part of this lecture that okay, uh, while charging the capacitor, I am spending some energy in this resistance which is connected in the circuit is not? Because during the charging process current is flowing through the resistance therefore, I square R loss taking place in the resistance. So, to charge a capacitor to a voltage E, you are also spending some energy in some resistance is not? Now, let us calculate how much energy we are uh, wasting in charge because uh, power in a resistor is a wasted power it, it cannot be recovered it is wasted as heat to the to the environment now the question is how much energy we are energy uh, let me write it like this this is very interesting observation energy dissipated in 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 r while while eh, while charging the capacitor to the supply voltage to the supply supply voltage. In this case it is E. So, I redraw the circuit this is E. So, that it will be easier for me to talk this is C is not. You have closed the switch at t equal to 0 this is S this is E this is R this is C and we got that E is equal to sorry V 
voltage across the capacitor plate is uh, this one. tau is R c and uh, the current in the circuit I t we have got to be E by R into E to the power minus T by R c. These are the two fundamental things. Similarly, in case of inductor we found out current in the circuit and voltage across the inductor as a function of time. Now, anyway after we get this now let us calculate the power instantaneous power loss power loss in the circuit in the circuit is equal to I square R I square into R that is equal to P t if you write P t is equal to this P t is equal to this. Now, energy dissipated in in R in time d t will be uh, d w is equal to p into d t we have done it several times earlier and this will be equal to i square r into d t. Now, uh, this i square will be a square by r square I am putting this this thing here i square square by r square into e to the power square. So, it will be minus 2 t by r c is not i square into r into d t. Therefore, total energy dissipated in R will be equal to W will be equal to E square by R square this R will also come outside and you have to integrate this E to the power minus 2 T by R C into D T and this integration is to be carried out from T equal to 0 to infinity. Recall this this current was like this. This is E by R and this is I T and this is your time, this is 0. So, so this integration, this 1 R goes here, it will be e square by R and this integration is e to the power minus 2 T by R c. So, e to the power m x e to the power m x by m. So, uh, so uh, uh, this will be minus 2 by R c is not and the limits of integration is 0 to infinity for t limits are for t. So, so this will be the thing and this negative sign you can do away with uh, by changing the limits. So, it will be e square by r was there here and this will be r c by 2 r c by 2 and uh, this will be e to the power minus you do on your own I am doing in my own way uh, this, uh, this, this thing I have taken into account. Uh, so, nothing is there here 1. So, uh, uh, so the this negative sign I have removed. So, I will write it as 0 to infinity like this. Okay. Limits I have changed negative sign goes. So, 
so this will be this r goes it will be equal to half c square and what is this integration uh, i mean this limit if you put it is equal to 1 minus 0 because at t equal to infinity e to the power minus infinity that is 0 and t equal to 0 it is 1. So, this uh, result eventually it is half c square, but the point therefore, to charge a capacitor to a voltage capital E you have made a circuit like this, it will finally store how much energy half c square that is known, but we also observe that uh, the energy dissipated in R is also half c square. Got the point? For example, if I say in language C, it is how interesting it is. I am telling that okay, this is here is a capacitor store hundred millijoule into the capacitor. This result tells you that okay, you make a circuit like this, if you want to store 100 millijoule, 100 millijoule should be also dissipated in R. That is you must be ready with 200 millijoule. And another interesting thing is the amount of energy dissipated in R this this quantity. So, half c square this uh, energy I, I write it like this energy dissipated in R is equal to half c square which is equal to energy stored in R energy stored in capacitor finally stored in capacitor in capacitor that is there and also this quantity energy dissipated in r half c square is independent of the value of r that is very important is independent of the value of r no matter what value of r you are connecting to charge a capacitor to this battery voltage E, this much of energy will be dissipated in r, it is independent of the value of r. That is why we say that if you want to store 100 millijoule in a capacitor, 100 millijoule will be also dissipated in the resistance. And the amount of power delivered by the battery amount this can be easily corroborated by this one amount of power we know who delivers power battery this is plus this is minus i t is like this. So, it is delivering power into the circuit amount of power delivered by the battery by the source is how much voltage across it into I t and uh, total amount of total uh, amount of power is this. So, amount of energy delivered energy delivered uh, will be w will be nothing but E i d t energy delivered by the battery source and from 0 to infinity. Now, this integration if you carry out e it will be it will be uh, 0 to infinity here no i square i i is what i is e by r into e to the power minus t by r c d t and uh, this one will then become this I can rub now it is there. 
So, uh, this one will be equal to um, how much it will be equal to e square by r and this integration will be e to the power minus t by r c by minus 1 over r c and integration limit is 0 to infinity. So, so this will be equal to uh, you know uh, this r r goes c e square c e square and uh, and uh, this is e to the power the same thing minus r c limits you interchange to take care of this negative sign and it will be equal to c square. And that is true, because energy stored is half c square must have been supplied by this source and energy dissipated in R is also half c square must have been supplied by the source. Therefore, energy supplied by the source should be half c square plus another half c square that is equal to c square that is what we have got. Therefore, uh, you see these are uh, the interesting observations one must make that is you to charge a capacitor with certain amount of energy to store some certain amount of energy x uh, joule you must be ready that your supply should supply to x joule. And that joule, if you think that I will vary R and uh, maybe energy dissipated in R will be less, no. That amount of energy will be dissipated in R independent on the value of R. Whatever final energy is stored, that amount has to be dissipated in R. So, these are the observation interesting observations you should make whenever you do uh, some circuit analysis. Energy point power point is very interesting and important too. It will make your life easier to understand and analyze the results obtained in circuit analysis. Thank you very much go through it carefully next class we will do discharging of capacitor. Thank you.